praise of God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. Lord, we give you thanks for all the fathers who are gathered here today. May they be pillars of their faith. Lord, I ask that you bless them and you bless us all. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. <clears throat> so King David was not a sinless man. You may know stories of King David. He was not flawless by any means, but he was a man of remarkable faith. When all of Israel stood in fear of a giant named Goliath, David stood confident. When no one wanted to fight the giant, David, who was still a boy, a teenager, nominated himself. When everyone assumed with certainty that if any Israelite went up against this giant named Goliath, that they would certainly fail, that they would certainly lose, David laughed. And he said, who does this fool think that he is for trying to defy the army of the living God? David was not a sinless man. Do not think that he was. He was a human, just like you and me. But his faith, his faith was remarkable. His faith was undeniable. Time after time, when David looked like he would face defeat, he stayed faithful, and he felt that God would guide him, that God would restore him, and that God would lead him. Fear had no power over David. When King Saul absolutely loved David as if he was his own son, then David remained faithful. And then when King Saul went crazy, because really that's what happened, and decided that he wanted to search and, and find and kill David, David still remained faithful. No matter what happened, David was a man of great faith. Now I think if we look back at, you know, throughout history, as we think about today, this 21st century, we need even more men today with great faith. Every Sunday I look out into the pews and I see the same men here every week and you men are remarkable. You guys have such great faith and you are so full of faith that we know it. But whenever I look out in the pews, I always see more women than I do men. It always happens and I think that somehow, someway, we need to encourage in this world and in this society more men to have great faith. Now I don't know what it is that gets you men who are here every single week to have such great faith, but we need to find out what it is and we need to instill that in other men, especially young men in this world. Now I wanted to, of course, just have a Father's Day service. Because you men who are here, you have such great faith, and I really wanted to honor you. But with everything that happened this past week, I needed to switch gears a little. So let's talk about the atrocity that happened this week. The atrocity that happened when our own brothers and sisters in Christ were murdered in a church while in Bible study. All because of one young, disturbed, delusional man who claimed to be a white supremacist. All because he decided that he wanted to take things into his own hands and he wanted to kill innocent people gathered in a community of faith. And he murdered two pastors, one also a state senator, and he murdered a pastor's wife. And he murdered a doctor who happens to be the cousin of one of our own national UCC ministers. And he murdered a librarian and a track coach and mother. He murdered a young student. He murdered two grandmothers. And he would have murdered a five-year-old girl had she not listened to the advice of her grandmother and played dead. This week, a horrible atrocity happened. Now, this young man, his name is Dylan, and I think it is clear that faithfulness is not in this young man's life. Instead, hatred is the God of this man, Dylan's life. God is not in his life at all. And as I was thinking about this, and I had already chosen the scripture, and I was going to change it, but I started thinking it, and I realized that, no, we still have giants in this world. We still have giants that haunt us and that haunt us in this world, only the giants aren't maimed Goliath. Instead, the giants that taunt us, that taunt society, are called racism and sexism and bigotry and terrorism and homophobia and maybe even materialism and selfishness. Those are the giants that haunt our society to death. There are still giants in this world who pride themselves on taunting others and creating harm. High school friends of Dylan, the shooter, remembered the racist jokes that he would 
would often tell in high school. He would sit there and he would just say racist jokes, they were used to it. And a former friend, who was apparently his, his best friend in middle school, reconnected with him recently and was rather scared away by Dylan when he learned uh, that Dylan wanted to reinstitute segregation. Now people knew, many people knew, that he was a part of a white supremacist group. People knew this kind of thing. They knew that, that this kid was, was just this, this strong racist, and they knew this kind of stuff. And as far as I can see, nobody did anything. Nobody stopped him. When he made his racist jokes in high school, his friend said, well, you know, we were just so used to it. Nobody went to him and said, you know what? This is wrong. This is evil. You can't say these kind of things. No one made Dylan see that his mindset is not just wrong, it's evil. No one stopped Dylan when he said that he wanted to inflict pain on people with black and brown skin tones. Instead, they just ignored him. They ignored him and they went on their way. And worst of all, someone, someone along the way instilled this, this white supremacist mindset into young Dylan's mind. And as far as we know, as far as we know, nobody stood up against this young man. Nobody told him that what he was doing was evil. People just ignored him. And they let him do what he was doing. His roommate knew that he was going to do something bad. People knew that he was going to do something bad, and then one day he took a gun. And he went to a church. The holy ground where our brothers and sisters in Christ were gathered together in Bible study. He took a gun, and he killed them. Nine innocent people, nine faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, and he didn't just go in and kill them. He stayed with them for an hour, and he listened to them pray, and he listened to them read our holy scriptures, and then he did this horrible, horrible thing. We have giants in this world. And the giants are not named the lies anymore. These giants today are named racism and sexism and homophobia. We, friends, still have giants out there taunting us in the world. They're still there. But here's the thing. When King David was just a boy, he was young. He saw this giant, and the giant wasn't really taunting him. David could have gone back to his dad's farm. He didn't need to stay with all the Israelite people that were gathered out front. He didn't need to stay with them. He could have gone back to his father's farm. He could have gone back to shepherd the sheep, but instead, he saw that there was a giant that was taunting him, that was taunting him and taunting his neighbors, and he's like, no, no, no. This isn't all right. He saw this giant, and he stood up against him. And when face to face with the giant, he practically laughed at him before walking out with no armor whatsoever. But David had only what? A slingshot and five pebbles. So here's my question. You know, everything's a little convoluted this week. Here's the question that's been running through my mind as I've been thinking about we've got Father's Day today, and, and we need men who are, who are so strong in their faith. So I, I'm thinking about that thought. I'm thinking about King David who stood up against the giant, and then I'm, I'm thinking about this church that had a shooter come in and kill its innocent people. And I started to think, are we as faithful as King David? I told you King David wasn't flawless. He was not sinless. But are we as faithful as King David? Are we willing to stand up against giants? What do you think? If we had run into Dylan on the street, or we had heard him in, in school say a racist joke, would we have just ignored it? Or would we have stood up against that giant? Are we willing to confront a giant, whatever it might be, if it taunts our neighbors? Are we willing to stand up against a giant, the giant of racism, for instance, and tell it that not only is it wrong, but it's evil and it's sinful? Our own brothers and sisters in Christ were murdered. They're our brothers and sisters. They're part of our family of faith. And they were murdered because nobody stopped. So here's the thing. Now, I'm not going to, I know this probably makes me sound horribly unfeminist and everything, but on Father's Day especially, I started thinking about how we need more really strong men of faith who are willing to stand up and willing to be pillars of faith in this world. We need men who are willing to stand up when somebody does something wrong. We need, we need men like Cal who's going to hear somebody say a racist joke and who's going to say, that's not all right. Stop it. 
Amen? You need to lead the way. You're bigger. You're physically stronger. You need to lead the way. We need to be pillars of our people. We need to stand up against giants. If you're ready to stand up against the giant, whatever the giant may be in society, will you say amen? Amen. amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, this week was a painful week. Nine of our brothers and sisters of Christ were murdered, all because of the giant of racism. Lord, we are, our hearts are broken for them, and we pray for the community of Charleston. We pray for Emmanuel A. and the church, and Lord, we ask that you bless them, and that you heal them, and that you be with them. We pray for that little girl who must have been so scared that she was only five years old, and we give you thanks for protecting her. And Lord, we pray for all of those who are affected by this horrible shooting. We pray all for all of those who have racist thoughts in their mind, or, or hateful thoughts in their mind, or, or whatever thoughts in their mind. And Lord, we ask that you change them, that you come into their lives and that you change them. And Lord, we even pray for Dylan, for the shooter. We pray for him, and Lord, we ask that you change his heart. We ask that your love enter his heart so that he can ask for repentance. Lord, we ask that you change him. We do not think he is unsa unsavable. We ask that you change his heart by coming into his life. And Lord, we ask that you bless us all as people of faith and that you teach us how to be strong and courageous. That you teach us how to raise young men and women to be courageous and to stand up for those who need. And we pray all in every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.